Hey everybody. Sierra. Mm, it's sacrilegious. Oh, I was say song. You weren't going to say it because I did it first. I just said I was going to say it's so pretty. Oh, well, I'm glad you didn't then. <laughs> so it's it's time to play Space Quest V, the next mutation, and play it with us doing it now, not from a video from like five years ago where we did it on Twitch and we're answering questions through it. And it makes no sense when we're answering some of the questions because you can't see a chat. So it was pointless anyway. And we have better audio nowadays. In some ways. <laughs> <laughs> in some ways it's worse because we're not in the same room anymore but uh what's always ironic is this game obviously was not made made by both of the guys from andromeda so there's always been a little bit of a question on this one but in my opinion it's one of the best so and and then they completely destroy this in the sixth game and, and, it, and it's the sixth game all right but, uh, <laughs> that's about the time that sierra just kind of yeah in general when ken williams wasn't really all that much a part of it anymore anyway where the other company had already bought it out but eh, it is what it is this is a very good game though so here we go let's see the intro actually ooh, techno babble i know i like that that's cool oh look it's buying stuff Ooh, buying these stuff. numbers probably don't work anymore ooh, buy these hint books Absolutely no hints will be provided through our customer support lines. Ooh, the automated hint system's only available in the United States. That costs money. Ooh, boot disks. Sound blasters. We're using MT32. There's no speech in this game. Like, it's talking about speech. I remember when I got the Space Quest collection, I was so mad because... Holy crap, there's a lot there. <laughs> Well, they did say techno babble. They did. They were crying. Oh, okay. All the, yeah, because they did keep that thing going. If you didn't like the game, you could return it for your money back, but you had to say why you didn't like it. That was always a big thing. But um, <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> It still amazes me to this day that it took them five games to start parroting Star Trek like this. Well, I think that was part of the thing they were without doing it. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I like how Roger's just like, oh. And, and a lot of... Out. You, know, you can tell that dynamics had a lot to do with this game even before they tell you it's a dynamics thing. Just the art style is very much kind of like their... Um, Rise of the Dragon game with the more comic book style. This reminds me of that uh, Windows 3.11 uh, screensaver, like just the star feel. <laughs> yeah. All oh, screensavers. And the flying toasters. Oh, I forgot about the flying toasters. Captain's Log. SCS Excalibur. Stardate 2709.67. Fleet Admiral Roger Wilco commanding. The Excalibur is on course to investigate the mysterious disappearance of several ships in the uncharted region of the space known as the Mendo Triangle. I, I no doubt have been selected for this mission due to my great achievements as a military leader and matchless diplomatic skills. <laughs> this is Roger Wilco we're talking about here. Oh my. Fleet Admiral. That Brannigan! <laughs> Would you like the rest of the Champagne? No. no. <laughs> and it's pronounced champagne. <laughs> oh, God! I go forward with total confidence in my ship and my crew, yet I am vaguely uneasy. I cannot put memories of traveling to the future and meeting my son out of my mind. Each night, my dreams are haunted by the image of the woman he said one day would be my wife. I know she's out there. Somewhere. Maybe we're in a different timeline and this doesn't happen in this timeline. Shh. But that's not important right now. The fate of trillions ride on the decisions I may have to make in the next several hours. As captain of the Star Confederacy's proudest flagship, I must follow the supreme guideline. Hello, Wrath of Khan. <laughs> to boldly go where no man... Oh, nah, 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 nah. Wrong. <laughs> to bravely traverse where no... Cre <laughs> That's not it. Yeah, skip it. 
I mean, even starts out like Wrath of Khan, where they're in like you know the training mission thing. Of course, it's <laughs> Admiral striking or strike ships coming in at point three five. Seizure warning. Alert. <laughs> at least they tell you it's alert. Shields up. Batters. Battle stations. Lock weapons. Neutron beams locked. Proton torpedoes aimed. Armed. Tactical fire. Neutron beams. Helm. Hard support. Ah no. Cadet Wilco, what in the name of the Seven Star Cluster are you doing in the bridge simulator? Get your sorry carcass out of there and get back to class where you belong, space cadets. And if I catch you in there again without permission, I'll have you tossed out of the academy so fast you'll get warp disorientation. Simulation terminated. I love, like, the clear rodent problem they have here at the uh, Academy. <laughs> skitter, skitter, skitter. <laughs> oh, even the sound effects. His illusions of space-faring grandeur cruelly shattered by Captain Quirk. <laughs> Roger Wilco exits from the bridge simulator into the hallways of the Star Confederacy Space Academy where he has enrolled himself in an attempt to realize his lifelong dream of becoming a starship captain. The last several months have not been easy for our hero, with what having to juggle time between skipping classes, snoozing through lectures, and spending long moments considering the implications of actually opening a textbook. But our fearless former sanitation engineer has stumbled resolutely past these obstacles, Pursuing his goal with unwavering determination, blissfully unaware that the fate was about to hurl another spitball in his direction. I had to do that narrator at least once. <laughs> we'll save him for King's Quest One. What they they have a different narrator for here this one. It's more like Yeah, it's Gary Owens, so Yes, that's who it is. It's more like this panel, when it works, allows the user to call up a 3D holographic schematic of the Starcon Space Academy. It's like you, here, Roger that's... Wilco, Space Guy. What is wrong with my mouse? There we go. It's you, Roger Wilco, Space Hero Extraordinary. <laughs> Got something stuck there. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> this we... definitely looks like the first two Star Trek thing, like with the ship and Starport like that. Oh, yeah. Well, it's even got this. this I mean, there's clearly the ship. <laughs> okay, what is going on with the mouse here? Well, I think my late... I got, there we go. Got some dust in there. I do believe, because you can talk on all these. An Alpha Class Strike Fighter from the Colony Worlds. This baby has it all. Speed, maneuverability, and enough firepower to blast apart a comet. Too bad you'll probably never even get within shouting distance of one in your natural lifetime. <laughs> Astro Techs bustle about the ships and the Academy Landing Bay. The Starcon Registry lists this ship as the personal launch of Ambassador Beatrice Wankmeister. Well, she's here. Uh, <laughs> I wonder be... if that makes anything happen in the future. <laughs> From the G6 Quadrant, you dimly recall hearing her name once before, but the effort to remember anything further results in nothing more than your brain going... <laughs> this aging behemoth has outlived its intended lifespan by several decades and will soon be heading for the scrapyards. Oh. <laughs> because at this Just point... Just like in the movies. Oh well, yeah, because Space Quest, or Space Quest. Star Trek VI had already come out by 1993, because we're getting ready for generations at this point. Yeah. So, it was very true. This agronomically designed, state-of-the-art personnel access corridor is designed to allow sentient creatures to traverse the station with maximum efficiency. A small janitorial closet is situated at the end of one hallway. Roger could sniff one of those out like nothing. Usually that's where he falls asleep and survives some kind of catastrophe. <laughs> that is correct. This panel, when it works, allows the user to call up a 3D holographic schematic of the Starcon Space Academy. 
it's probably not working today. <laughs> Don, <Dawn, laughs> the holo map directory isn't working right now, and it's a shame because the map system is really cool, and it's got all these things going on. <laughs> but it costs too much money, so we didn't do it. But that kind of works for the game's favor. <laughs> you don't have time to waste mucking about in the closet right now. No one to kill. Trying to order yourself around? Pretty weird if you ask me. But then, hey, what do I know? I'm just the narrator. It's a shame that we didn't get any of that. I know, I wish they had the narrator. He was a good guy. Just another interesting but totally useless example of technological engineering. We have new ships over there. Hard working space dudes. Twelve full size star cruisers can be outfitted simultaneously in the massive Starcon vehicle bay, making it the second largest structure of its kind in the known universe, according to Guinness Log of Galactic Records. What's the first largest? Roger's pants pockets. Uh... This three-man fighter was captured from the dreaded Pirates of Pestilon during their daring attempt to stop going away. <laughs> and their attempt to escape the confines of Space Quest 3. Named for his beloved wife, this sleek Corvette called Lady Plusbucker is designed <laughs> for the Academy's commandant's use exclusively. Recently, several freshmen were disciplined for scandalously altering the ship's name as a, a cadet is initiation prank. I wonder what they made it say. Maybe plus flucker or fuck busser? Who knows? A Deltan frigate from the G6 Quadrant. Hopefully a ship like this one will one day be yours. Provided, of course, that you make it through the Starcon Academy's rigorous training regimen. We're working so hard. We are. Or hardly working. Oh, there's even more. You've always wondered what this panel does, but it has never been able to figure out its function. The explanation was probably given in one of the many class lectures slept away during your tenure here at the Academy. Trainers like this one are used to instruct cadets in basic space flight techniques. Due to the relative lack of skill by cadets, these ships suffer a high rate of attrition. <laughs> the current record for number of ships wrecked stands at three and is currently held by Roger, which includes a notable incident where he totaled a ship without even leaving the hangar. Odds are two to one among his classmates that Roger will break his own record before graduating. Yay! Roger sucks. This patrol craft was damaged in the skirmish with smugglers on the rim of the galaxy and is currently undergoing a major overhaul. Fortunately, it suffered less damage than the ship Roger tried to place in hyperspace before leaving space dock. Oh. Good times. This is great country. This bulk cargo freighter contains supplies for the colony on Clorox 2. Astromechs are hard at work refitting the ships in this station's vehicle bay. These men cringe every time they hear the name Roger Wilco and pilot training in the same sentence. <laughs> in a bold and daring artistic departure from standard Starcon design specifications, the decorators of this hallway originally opted for a top on Desert 10 color scheme. This is a door to conference room A. Is there a B? This window currently looks... Oh, there's something going on. Ooh. Oh. Uh? Your yeah, security clearance is too low to enter the room. In fact, it's so low you need a pass just to go to the restroom. So we suck. Can we get close to the window and look in? Eh, 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 eh. No, because it's lighter. Oh, even more stuff. Hey, there are people! For sale items, Academy Social Events, and scores for the SAT test, when they become available, are posted on this bulletin board. Fellow members of the tightly knit Starcon Cadet Brigade. This locker is used by various professors to store teaching aids for their respective classes. This sleek little beauty is for sale and can be yours for a mere 10,000 buckazoids. Dial 555 Good Cars and ask for Fester Blatz. I hey, that's their callback. I know, I didn't even... I remember, I never even realized they mentioned Fester Fest Blatz in this game. This ship once belonged to the two guys from Andromeda, but was seized when one of them walked out on his 10,000 buckazoid tab in the Academy Lounge. The SCS Lollipop. <laughs> A good ship. 
So that one at the top there reminds me of the Flight of the Navigator. It does, yeah. Or that weird Tom Cruise um, movie with the aliens. Um, what was that? Um, the day <laughs> world still or something. <laughs> no one wants to talk to us. Did your mother have any children who lived well? <laughs> Ouch. Drop dead, Wilco. Aww. Oh, you can't look at whatever that is. Can I touch it? We them? didn't program that. <laughs> Knock it off, Wilco! But I must touch. And we don't have lick or pull our pants down in this one. <laughs> no, we don't. This is it. Hey, we've been on this side. Yep, so let's go back. Because we're 16 minutes in and we have done Jack. <laughs> Sorry, hey, is I'm that late, Professor. Behind us? Yes, well, there's quite a few things going on back there. <laughs> you mean the Starcon aptitude test is today? Yes, sir. I'll get started right away. What's that? Come talk to you after class? Uh, yes, sir. So, time to start. <laughs> and what I would love the music. And what would Roger do in this situation? He doesn't know anything. He clearly is not going to know the answer to this. So, Gronko is commanding a Nova-class scout ship when he finds himself face-to-face -face with three Horak battlecruisers. He should... A. Surrender in the face of impossible odds. B. Pretend they aren't there. C. Activate his ship's self-destruct mechanism. D. Beam over a pick-you-up bouquet. Or E. Reboot. Reboot! Reboot! <laughs> so... Check out the brain pan on this guy. He's probably smarter than your whole family! It's you! No, it's not, wacky space guy. I am on the guy behind me. Wolf is the senior class Enbu Jitsu champion at the academy. <laughs> you have a strange suspicion that you've seen this woman before, but you can't quite place her. Cadet Muckblob likes to keep one eye out for trouble, which frequently causes him to bump into things. Cadet Schleppo appears to be dull and stodgy, much like yourself. Cadet Oftboffer is one of the horniest individuals you're likely to meet. <laughs> Cadet Antenna has been the brunt of many jibes concerning her cranial appendages. So, what you're supposed to obviously do is cheat off him when it's turned around like that, and it tells you the answer is D. And he, he look, clearly, she's done that. Yeah. So, D. Then number two, give us number two here. When encountering an alien ship for the first time, you should immediately A. Open fire with every weapon at your disposal. B. Broadcast Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries over the comm link. C. Beam your entire crew over to their ship as a gesture of goodwill. D. B. Then A. Or E. None of the above. That was my teacher reading voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you can do is, let's have a death. Look at us. I like how he's like, oh. Uh, oh, <laughs> busted. Schlep. Oh, I thought they would like zap us into like a pile of ash. Well, no, they literally just shot him out into space. Maybe you should have taken the correspondence course. I quest for glory reference. <laughs> I love the game over music in this, in this game quite a bit. All right, so let's wait for him to... Uh, turn around here. Turn around, yeah. All right, so the answer to this one is E. None of the above. Before beaming down to an unexplored planet for the first time, you should be sure to check A. To see that your seat belt is fastened and tray tables are locked securely in the upright position. B. Your fly. <laughs> C. Your life insurance coverage. D. 
the Fetzer valve in your oxygen mask, or E, the planet's atmospheric readings? Hmm. Well... According to a genius over there, it is the planet's atmospheric readings. Oops, that doesn't I, make sense. <laughs> I just touched the wrong unit. It's like... Mm. You're marooned on an alien planet with no weapons and a killer android out for your blood. You should, uh -oh. A, gather basic ingredients to make gunpowder and fashion a cannon from vines and sticks. B, stuff a banana in its exhaust pipe. C, drop a big rock on the robot and shout, Hasta la vista, baby. D, roll in the mud to camouflage yourself. Or E, climb a tree, flap your arms wildly, and scream tweet tweet at the top of your lungs in order to mimic the mating behavior of the ruby-throated um, actuar swine falcon, I don't know, as the, a diversionary tactic. The ruby-throated actorin swine falcon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's outside of my field of knowledge. <laughs> Well, he says it's C. So he says drop a big rock on the robot and go, Hasta la vista, baby. Now, this does have a hint for later in the game about stuffing the banana in its exhaust pipe. I and, I think that's pretty cool how they give you hints. And of and course, like foreshadowing D stuff. is a Predator reference. So... Here we go. We're going with drop a big rock on, rock on the robot and say hasta la vista, baby. What happens if you get one of these wrong while doing the test? Does it... It eventually doesn't matter anyway. You can really just put whatever you want because uh -huh. you're going to automatically... Like, you can technically fail if you miss too many. I don't know the answer, supposedly. But then again, Dan and, and uh, the Game Grumps, when they did it, he just put a bunch of random shit in and it, and it still passed him on. So, I don't know. But it, we're going to do it the right way. Uh, All right. You're on an EVA. Is that right? No, it's an EVA. It's just a oh, short. Oh, EVA. I'm sorry. <laughs> All these alien words and I don't get an acronym. <laughs> You're on an EVA with a partner and you notice his face is turning blue and he is clutching wildly at his throat. This is a sign that, A, you will soon need a new partner. <laughs> In a burst of creative insight, he has created a new dance called the Moonwalk. C, he is suffering from a vitamin deficiency and needs to eat more leafy green vegetables. D, he fell for the old golf ball in the air hose trick. Or E, A and D. <laughs> well, you might definitely soon need a new partner. I think A and D makes sense, actually. Yes. <laughs> 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 Actually, that is the right answer, but uh, hold on. I have a cat up here again. Oh, what's the kitty doing? Uh, thinks because I, I, I don't give her wet food all the time that she needs it immediately. My dog's asleep in my lap. So if something startles her awake, you'll hear it, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I knew the answer to that one. That is correct. E and D. Number six. To ensure that your crew's microwave mills are heated adequately and evenly on board your ship, you should A. Warp everything or wrap everything. <laughs> wrap everything in aluminum foil. That'll work. B. Cook each mill at the maximum power setting for 45 minutes. <laughs> C. Put a live space varmint in with each mill so you can more easily determine when it's done. Oh, God. D. Huck the thing and settle for roasting wieners on the uh, maneuvering jets. Ooh, or I e. like wieners. Oh, you would, Cedric. I do. <laughs> or I'm E, inject a radioactive wieners. plutonium isotope into each piece of food. When it glows, it's ready. There is not one good idea in this entire one. Probably... <laughs> Wait a minute. Actually, there is, because you know what the live space varmint could be. You just put Cedric in there. No, you don't oh, want don't owl dropping all over your food. I don't think I want to be in there unless I'm allowed to eat the food while it cooks. 
And then you become like an explosive animal. <laughs> Ooh, amazing! Of course, you are, you know, immortal, so. <laughs> At this stage. No one knows my backstory anymore. Okay, so the answer is C. You put a life space farm in it. Oh, you. right. I thought it would be D. <laughs> so uh, we're going to put Cedric in there. Oh. Number seven. Sorry. Oh, that's a slide right. adjustment. Okay. Okay. Is that everyone got question six? Everyone good on question six? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read question seven. For sir, us. sir, can you reread question two? <laughs> yes. I'll, after I go through all the questions, I'll go back and reread them if you need me to. I need so it now. No, we go through them in order, and then I go back and read whatever you need. You're a terrible teacher. Well, uh, <laughs> at least I'm getting paid. <laughs> Number seven. If Greeb leaves the Crab Nebula... Sir, at, sir, yeah. who's Greeb? Um, a random person. It's of no consequence. They just want to be ethically diverse, and so they use Greeb. Okay. Okay. So if Greeb leaves the Crab Nebula at 32... 100 hours GST galactic standard time and travels at 9.7 million ZPM how long will it take him to reach planet Drav Drav oh, five. Five. I'm putting an R in there for whatever reason Davicon 5 if he has the solar wind at his back is it A 49.3 hours B he will never reach Davicon 5. The solar wind is highly unstable and will blow him off course. C, 3.75 standard days. D, 49 hours and 30 minutes GST. Or E, never. The neutron star at the center of the Crab Nebula is so massive that Grebe's ship can never reach escape velocity. We all know how I play these games, so I'm saving a lot. Oh well, my gosh, Kat. They wouldn't let you save it. They didn't want you to. So we're never going to reach that nebula. That neutron star is just not going to make it happen. Question eight. How fast does light travel through a vacuum? I actually know this. It's, it is going to be... Uh, it's going to be answer A. Uh, scientifically. 186,000 miles per second. B, very, 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 very fast. C, 669,000, six, oh, a million, 600,000 miles per hour. Or D, depends whether it's an upright or canister vacuum. I'm sure it's B. I bet it's D. Oh, it's E. Or D, I'm sorry. Depending on whether it's an upright or canister or vacuum. <laughs> okay, which is an example of a fuzzy boundary? A, the area in space between two planetary bodies where a smaller third object is not clearly under the gravitational influence of either. B, the event horizon of a supermassive black hole. C, the place where a receding hairline gives way to bear scalp. Or D, the point at which the marginal utility of trying to squeeze that last bit of toothpaste from the tube is offset by the opportunity cost of going to the store for a new one. Okay. I, I, I bet Roger would think the hairline. He probably would. But in this case, it's the area in space between two planetary bodies. And the last one. Question 10. To successfully accomplish a manual molecular reintegration bypass on a standard transporter unit, you should A. Reverse the phase polarity of the interface grid. B. Jiggle the handle. <laughs> C. Pray fervently to whatever deity you happen to believe in. D, C, then B, hmm. or E, switch to U.S. Sprint, which, is that even a company now? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Sprint? 
<laughs> Everything gets bought out. I don't. I have, even... I have Sprint. <laughs> the answer is reverse the phase polarity of the interface grid. Do we need to know that for later? Yes. The test's over already? Yes, sir. I agree that cleaning the Academy Crest is an appropriate punishment for being late to class. I'll get right on it. We are a cleaner. A janitor. So in the next episode, I guess that we will go ahead and be begin the game for real and do what Roger does best and clean something. So stay tuned for Space Quest V, The Next Mutation, Episode 2. This has been Chris. Yay. And Adam. Oh, and, and Cedric. I was going to say, and Cedric was here somewhere. <laughs> I was here, bitches. <laughs> I'm still like Rich Evans. He just wants roasted wieners. <laughs> I love roasted wieners. Ah, they make my head spin round and round and round. They're like little worms on a stick. Except they're juicy and plump. Like dicks! Sporting goods? No, penises! Oh my goodness! Like Leisure Suit Larry, Wet Dreams Do I Twice, and it sucks just as much. Their motto is this game sucks so much we're just gonna put penises out. Yeah, I know. It's like here's here's a dick. <laughs> here's a wait, here's a wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a dick. <laughs> you can watch my or listen to my opinions on that game on some video at some point <laughs> that's already been released. Oh. Bye everybody. <laughs> Goodbye.